Hello everyone, my name is Jason, the Wizard of Ops. Today we will be discussing how to make a swing trade thesis using strictly Voland. Before we discuss this subject, I want to emphasize that Voland shows option dealer positioning and metrics surrounding the option space. It is not meant to substitute for a fundamental thesis. Many stocks will have idiosyncratic movements based on the performance of the company, and the overall market can be catalyzed in different ways as well. That being said, in calmer markets or when expected catalysts are the only consideration, Voland works wonders. This is the case most of the time. Additionally, Voland gives you the tools to see when customers or dealers are panicking in different ways, but that is for another video. To make a swing thesis with Voland, there are two primary considerations to make, bias and volatility. Bias is determined primarily through VANA. VANA has been shown in the Voland white paper to be a leading indicator of market movement. The reason is because dealers do not hedge Vega a lot, but they are strict with their delta hedging. VANA measures the rate that the Vega movement turns into delta movement, and thus going from a Greek that dealers don't hedge strictly to a Greek that they do. To form this bias, I look at several time frames of VANA. I look at the all expiration VANA, the zero to 30 day expiration VANA right here, setting the groups, next week's VANA and this week's VANA. Those two I like to look at on a cumulative basis. The higher the VANA is, the more bullish it is. I use the average VANA as a neutral line for all expirations here in the aggregate VANA trend. The average line is this orange one right here, and you can see it called out here as 10.4 billion. The reason why I use these different expirations is to get a feel for the decay. Typically, the nearer term VANA, so for this week, will have a outsized impact, even though this is showing negative 200 million, it will have a little bit more of an impact than say even the 750 or 1 billion that next week has. And this is because that this week's VANA will decay faster. So this is an example using SPX. This is the individual strike, so I can check out each individual strike here. But mostly, the first thing I look at is in the all expiration. Because this VANA is very large and well above the current average, about 14 billion above the current average, I look at this and say, VANA has a really good chance of being bullish in the deep long term. These are all sold calls, primarily for the end of the year, and these are some bought puts, probably because of the recent volatility the market has had. This is uh, April 21st, 2025, so the market volatility has been wild because of the Trump tariff talk. What you want to see on the all expiration is when the price moves, will VANA go up or down? VANA will typically go up if price advances these little valleys right here in the VANA cumulative curve. Then VANA will go up. VANA will go down if we see these strong puts here. However, most of the time, if the market moves down in this scenario, people will buy puts and it will become more bullish. I look at that on all four VANA timeframes that I have up. So I see that zero to 30 day expiration has a pretty strong bullish look. And VANA would go up as we approach this valley here at 5290. Therefore, I have a strong sense that we will get up to this 5290, 5300 area, and probably because VANA is positive, probably make our way a little bit up this hill right here. Although it would be slower to go up in that way. Here for next week, I see very similar outlook where we can get up here to this 5290 area and then start hitting some strong resistance. The overall VANA here is about 375 plus 4, 741. So that's a little over 1 billion for next week. Therefore, next week, we should probably start a little bit of a bullish run. However, this week, we see we have negative 200 million VANA. So until we actually get over the cusp here at 5200, we will not see positive VANA for this week. So we could expect some volatility in this first week of the May option month. That is how I look at the overall VANA to develop a bias.
If you are looking at an individual stock, for example, say Microsoft or something like that, you can combine this week and next week's VANA. And the reason why is because SPX has zero DTE options and Microsoft does not. And therefore, you will get a fuller picture of the VANA decay by combining this week and next week's VANA. To form a volatility bias, I use the aggregate gamma before the market opens. This is because zero DTE gamma can get pretty high depending on option volume. The lower the aggregate gamma, the more volatile you can expect the underlying to be. Volatile does not necessarily mean bearish, just that the realized volatility can increase more. I use the historical average here in this case as well, but you do not need to use different tenors because the way gamma is calculated, the longer tenors are naturally discounted. Here is the example on SPX, where I see that gamma is negative, so it should be more volatile and well below historical average. Combining my VANA outlook with my gamma outlook, I think this week, because of the negative VANA, can be a little bit dicey, maybe bearish until we approach 5200, with the downside support being at around 5050 right here. That would be my bias for this week, but then after this week, I would expect a bullish run thanks to the 30-day expiration and the next week expiration. And how fast can that bullish run happen? Well, it can happen pretty fast because we are almost at gamma neutral and the historical average is a little bit above gamma neutral. It is at 121 million. So as a result, I think that we can move pretty strongly to the upside after this week. This week, we'll probably have a lot of whipsaw unless we get above 5,200 with support at 5050. And that would be my swing outlook. Then I can make a trade based on that. Thank you for watching this video and may Volen help you in your future trading ventures.